So that was my $1 pile. And now I'm gonna talk about these. So I did pick up a bunch of expeditions. Um, I traded for, what ones did I trade? Sacred and Overgrown. And then the rest I just bought in cash. Now let's, and then this one was this extra. I will talk about, I wanna talk about the fetch lands a little bit before we begin. Fetch lands, people have been asking me, should I buy fetch lands? Should I buy them? And the answer is yes. Make sure that you have your 20, four of each of the five in ons or cons, the onslaught fetches, mainly because utility wise, they will give you a lot of use. You can use them in legacy, eternal, EDH, whatever you need to use them in. But I would not speculate on this. And this is something that I have looked at the data. I've looked at the trends, I've looked at the fact the Shocklands are a very good example. This is much better than a Shockland and it's reflected by its price. So it's not like, oh, well, this is a four of and a Shockland may be a one or two of. Yes, I understand that. And the price is already reflecting the fact that this is a four of. Shocklands have just not gotten up in price. Neither have fetch lands. And the reason is there's too many of them. There's just too many of them. There's not enough players who want them. And the fact that Modern's dead, Modern is dead as a Pro Tour format. Legacy is has been dead for a long time. Any format that will be heavily promoted under Promotional Tour, the PT, does not need fetch lands. It is standard and draft. No fetch lands allowed. So a ton of people invested a ton of money on fetch lands and they have stockpiles of these. Stockpiles because Contra Tarkir was a heavily, heavily printed set. Now Magic the players, the growth of the players have slowed and I don't see many of them being as interested in modern, mainly because Wizards of the Coast won't promote it, just like they won't promote Legacy. So when you're dealing with Fetch Lands, which is a eternal commodity, and they're no longer in standard, and you have so many people who purchased large chunks of fetch lands expecting the pro tours to be modern at least and having that pulled back i'm no longer interested in them from a speculation point of view but if you don't have a play set of them have a play set because they will provide you play value they will provide you more play value than you will put into it if you purchase them today i don't see them going down in price because people will hold these fetch lands until forever. But I also don't see them growing very rapidly. You can put your money somewhere better. I mean, it's a safe investment, but it's not a, it's not something that I would recommend you to, uh, to put and collect too many of them. It's not Falia. Falia, I knew when I saw her and I saw the card that that was the card that eventually she would, you know, it's a $2 card, eventually she would be $8, and she's gonna break $10 soon enough with Death and Taxes as the cheapest legacy format now that Lion's Eye Diamond has spiked to absurd amounts of money. What's a Lion's Eye Diamond? It's $250 when it used to be 80. Awesome, great. So that is my personal take on the Fetch Lands. I know a lot of you asked me about that. Now my personal take on Expeditions, they are getting cheaper and they are getting tradable. It used to be no one would ever trade you Expedition, they just wouldn't do it. I mean maybe they trade it for a dual land, but they wouldn't trade it for standard. Like I said in my previous video, that's what I've noticed is people are willing to let these go. For whatever reason, and you might say financial, they want to buy Eldritch Moon, they want to do buy Commander decks. The interest in these have declined since they first came out due to the hype and now we're in Innistrad and we're removed from the expedition chase. I don't, I mean boxes of Battle for Zendikar is still $90 a box. Boxes of Oath is $80 a box. People purchase so many of these and they open so many of them that to me, there's, two, there's just a bunch of them right now and the demand is extremely low because you need to buy the new cards we have Eldritch Moon, we have Conspiracy 2, we just had Eternal Masters, we're gonna get Commander 2016, and you know, Dual Decks will come out. Nissa versus 
um, Nick's list. So much product is coming out that people need to sell or trade into that new product. And normally when people don't have that, when they're playing standard, they can't really trade out of their standard stuff. They need to trade into standard. So what I'm finding is a lot of people who want to play standard cannot afford standard anymore because they're buying all this secondary product. And whenever you buy a booster pack, good luck trying to get your money back from that pack because it's not going to happen. And if that happened, a card store would never sell you a booster pack or a booster box because they would just open it for themselves. It would make no sense if they could make money from opening boxes. So, Expeditions I like, but it's a long-term outlook. You have to be willing to put down some money uh, or put that down some trade, which in my opinion is money, to make a move on them because I don't know which one of these will spike, but I can definitely tell you one of these will spike eventually within a few years. And they'll double, they'll triple in price. They're extremely, I don't, I want to say that they are safe and they have the potential to spike. So in my opinion, I'd rather have these. I would rather have one of these or one Misty Rainforest than the equivalent of whatever, like 10 of these. Because although the 10 could be more liquid, I don't feel like in the future it is. I feel like this card is actually more liquid. And when you're talking about, when I talk about trades and speculations, I don't really care what the card goes up in price. If I can't move it, I can't move it. It's dead in my account. So if I can't, if I bought this for $20 and suddenly it's gone up to $45, but I still can't sell it for 45, I need to move it for 20 on buy list. That feels bad to me. So I'd rather not buy the card and put the money in something that I do know. So if this is, let's say this is $180, it goes up to 200. I know I can get 190 for it. It's price, it's buy list, it's very, very close and it will always be very close to whatever the TCG made is because it's a unique card. It has potential to go up and spike up in price. So if it spikes up by double, I know I can get much, much of a closer margin than I can get for this card if it spikes up and double. And this is a very high quality card. When you look at some other lower quality cards, like if this card spikes up to $20, no one's gonna pay $10. I mean, it's just not gonna happen at a buy list. And what I mean $10, if I have 50 of these, they're not gonna pay $10. That's what happened to Jace AOT. That's what happened to a lot of the speculations I go deep on is how am I going to get out from them? Because yeah, I have cards that are supposedly valuable, but buy list has not really increased. Anyway, large, that is my rant. Bye.